Are you contemplating a move to New Hampshire but are wondering if you can actually afford to live here? Stay tuned. I am going to go over morning until night, every expense you could encounter, and how New Hampshire compares to other states, as well as at the very end of the video, I will share with you the 10 most affordable places to live in New Hampshire and the 10 not so affordable places. first time here my name is Jen Baer and I am a realtor and ballroom dance instructor here in New Hampshire but most importantly I am a lifelong resident I grew up graduated high school college had my first job and I'm now raising a family living in an antique brick home if you are looking for inside information on New Hampshire then make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can share everything that I know with you so what do you think is living in New Hampshire and New England going to be more expensive or less expensive than the national average? Join me on a journey next in which I go from sun up to sundown and every kind of expense you can encounter during your day and how New Hampshire compares to the rest of the country. First, we're gonna start our day by heading out to our vehicle. So how much does it cost to own a car here in New Hampshire? Well, comparatively to the rest of the United States, according to insurance.com, over a five-year period, New Hampshire was ranked the cheapest place to own a car. Uh, they took into consideration a number of things. One was um, we have no sales tax. So the initial purchase of a vehicle, there are no extra fees on top of that. Um, two, they took into account the fact that we don't have mandated auto insurance laws, so you don't have to have car insurance, but you should. Uh, but because we don't have a minimum, uh, car insurance companies can be competitive with each other, and we are actually the sixth lowest in the country for our car insurance rates. They also took into account how far away the amenities that we need are in our lives. So even though we might have we usually stay right around the average for gas prices in the United States because we live so close to the places and we're not a huge state. Um, if you're going to go to work, uh, grocery store, doctor, office, anything like that takes into an account how far away those things are. Uh, because if you live somewhere where they do have a low gas price, but you have to drive double the amount of miles to get somewhere, uh, it evens out for some place with the national average gas price, but shorter distances and also car registration. Uh, we have one time a year you have to go and renew your car registration. It does take the state and town at once. Uh, you also have to get your car inspected. So it does seem to be like a big hit all at once um, on your birthday month, of course. Uh, but when I figured it out by um, how much we'd pay it a month versus like a year, uh, it, it worked out that my car, which is older, only comes out to like $10 a month. My husband's closer to $30 a month. His car's newer. So... You can always go online. There are calculators to figure out um, how much your car registration is going to be for your car, depending on the town you're living in. So next, you're driving to work, but you have a child that you need to drop off at daycare. How does New Hampshire compare with daycare across the country? So the national average is $11,000 a year is spent on daycare. New Hampshire does not have any free subsidized daycare. Now we are not in the top 10 most expensive places for childcare. Uh, Massachusetts is though. They are all the way up to over $20,000 a year average for daycare expenses. Maine is cheaper than us. They are only around 9,000. Uh, New Hampshire is around $12,791 a year. Now these are just averages. Obviously, if you don't have a child, then this doesn't factor into your cost of living here in New Hampshire. Uh, it is an issue in the fact that we don't have a lot of daycare. So there's long waiting lists. You have to get your child on uh, a year or so in advance. And because we do have regulations on how many children to one daycare personnel, uh, there are some labor shortages. So some daycares are having to limit their numbers. So it can be uh, a very stressful thing here in New Hampshire. All right, you've now arrived at work and you're gonna be earning money. So how does New Hampshire compare with salaries and minimum wage? So New Hampshire has an average salary of $65,421 and that puts us in the top 15 in the country. But minimum wage is still set at the federal level. We are at only $7.25. Now, if we look at this graph from the New Hampshire Fiscal Policy Institute, you will see that New Hampshire is the only New England state that is still just at the federal level. There is a debate in New Hampshire about the minimum wage. It's something we've been dealing with for many years. 
And a lot of it seems to center around the fact that most minimum wage workers are not the head of the household, that this their jobs are just bringing in additional income or their students, younger generations still living at home. So it doesn't seem to be a push or a drive as they don't believe that raising the minimum wage will actually take people out of poverty. Um, but we'll revisit this later on when we start talking about housing expenses. The good news is though, that on all those wages earned, there is no income tax here in New Hampshire. So what you make, you take home. End of the workday, you're on your way home and you're gonna stop. It's a change of seasons. You're gonna need a new winter coat or maybe you need a new bathing suit. Uh, so you'd stop into the store to buy that and there's no sales tax. Same thing if you need something, a larger item, like your washing machine's not working anymore, you need a new microwave or TV, no sales tax. Uh, groceries are also relatively reasonable here in New Hampshire. Price of a gallon of milk right now is averaging around $3, and in New Hampshire we're between $2 to $3. Um, Move.org actually has New Hampshire as the state you pay the least for groceries. Uh, they estimate that it costs about $183 per person per month for food in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, where the U.S. national average is $355 per person a month. Uh, I took that number and I looked at our budget for groceries and it does line up. And that may be in part too because there is no sales tax on groceries. Now we do have a meals and rooms tax. So if you decide that you're gonna pick up a pizza on the way home or stop to eat at a restaurant, then you are going to be paying a tax on that. And right now in New Hampshire, we have gone down just last month from nine to eight and a half percent. And this tax also applies for staying in a hotel or renting a car. You have now arrived home and you're gonna go check your mailbox and you're going to be picking up your utility bills. How does New Hampshire compare regarding utilities? So according to howmuch.net, New Hampshire is the sixth most expensive state in regards to utility costs. It estimates that we spend about $477 a month on utilities. And the utilities that they um, have selected are electricity, natural gas, water, internet, and cable. New Hampshire is the sixth most expensive. Massachusetts is eight. Vermont is nine and Maine is 10. So New England is an expensive place to live in regards to your utility costs. So even though the biggest culprit is electricity, I feel like it's real important about how you heat your home in the winter because oil can cost a lot. There's gas, there's the wood burning stoves, but you still have to buy the wood. Uh, and then even if you have a pellet stove that requires electricity to start up. So I feel like that is a huge utility cost. Whereas water, may not necessarily be, or a lot of properties have private wells. So even though you're not paying for the water service, you still have to pay to maintain that well um, or any kind of filtration system. Also in your bills may be a doctor bill. So how does healthcare stack up against the rest of the country? Well, according to the worldpopulationreview.com, New Hampshire is $7,214 per person per year, which is below the national average of 7,893. So even though insurance may cover a majority of these costs or a partial part of these costs, uh, it can still be a financial burden to keep in mind. And what does tend to drive up the cost of healthcare in an area is the overall age and health of the population. Uh, so Maine does really poorly in this because I believe they have a lot older population. So they're up to about $10,000 per person per year. Now you are home. And what does that mean here in New Hampshire? How much does it cost to have a roof over your head? So if you're going to be owning a property, the national average currently in 2021 uh, is 303288 so New Hampshire, our median home price is 381,978. So we are above average and we're up 21.8% over last year. And we also will have really high property taxes. We're in the top three for the country. Now, if you wanna know more about how to calculate property tax here in New Hampshire, I have a separate video on that because it does depend on where you're living. Each town sets their own rate and varies wildly. Uh, so it really doesn't, it's not just a blanket statement that we have high property taxes all over. So there are some places that are relatively reasonable. Now, what if you rent here in New Hampshire? According to msn.com, the average rent here in New Hampshire is $1,213.50. But that can vary, again, depending on where you're looking. Is it the city? Is it in a tourist area? Is it in a suburb? 
I found a really good rental calculator on apartmentguide.com that where you can put in the town and how much you make and it'll let you know how much you can afford. And then I'm gonna have a link down below that's gonna have a search for all available rentals in Southern New Hampshire. So you can go ahead and take a look at what you can afford and what is available. What is really interesting and eye-opening is um, GoBankingRates.com conducted a study to analyze what a minimum wage worker could afford for rent in each state. And the answer was nothing. There's not a single state where a minimum wage worker can afford a studio or one bedroom apartment. And there's only 15 states where two minimum wage workers could actually afford a two bedroom apartment. And New Hampshire is not one of them. Now this is a trickle down effect from the fact that we don't have enough homes on the market right now for people to move into, especially starter homes, because people who are currently renting and can afford finally that down payment they've been saving for and they wanna get their starter home, they can't find it. So they're staying in the apartment even though they can move on. Now that takes away an apartment available for somebody who can't afford yet to buy a house and needs to rent and therefore they're left without a place to live. So it's really, everything is interconnected here in the cost of living anywhere in the United States. But if you are interested in really seeing how it compares to your state in any of these categories, I'm gonna have links down below to every single site that I used to come up with my facts today. So where does New Hampshire stand? Well, on the cost of living index, it is only 10% higher than the national average at 109.7. So I hope you found that helpful. I really tried to touch upon all the things that are factored into the cost of living in an area and how you encounter it within your everyday life. And because you stuck with me to the end, I'm now gonna share with you the top 10 most affordable places to live in New Hampshire and the top 10 least affordable places to live. So according to homesnacks.com, the most affordable places to live in New Hampshire are Summersworth, Newport, Franklin, Rochester, Berlin, South Hooksit, Hudson, Claremont, Laconia, and Milford. Now the most expensive places to live are Durham, Newmarket, Manchester, Portsmouth, Nashua, Hanover, Exeter, Hampton, Dover, and Lebanon. I will have a link below to homesnacks.com so you can go through and see why each one of those areas fell into the categories they fell in. I've actually lived in more of the most expensive places, Durham being number one, that's where the University of New Hampshire is, and then I grew up in Manchester, which is our largest city. If you would like to know how your state where you currently live stacks up to New Hampshire, feel free to put your state in the comments below and then I'll reply with an answer. If you are looking for more information on New Hampshire, then check out my New Hampshire information playlist in which I have a number of videos discussing topics just like this today. And if you do want to see more videos like this, um, please give me a thumbs up. That way I will know to make them. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Hustle on my friends and I'll see you next time.